Hi, this is James from Square Internet with another WordPress tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to pick a color scheme for your website. Most businesses that I work with typically, even if they're a startup, tend to have a logo and some basic branding in place, whether that's just they've decided on a font and some colors they'd like to use. If you, you're just starting out and you haven't got a logo or any kind of basis for brands, then that's no problem. I'll give you some tips to start from scratch as well. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to build a color scheme around your logo. So we're going to use a little tool called eyedropper, which is a Google Chrome extension for getting the color from a web page, the element on a web page. Uh, it picks up the hex code, which is what you're going to need to use the second tool in this tutorial, color palette generator tool. So all that we're going to be doing is getting the, the digital color, so to speak, from a website or an image on the internet. And then we're going to be creating a color scheme around that color. So my website uses a color scheme based around uh, the midnight blue color, which is the color used in my logo. Uh, on this page, I've got an alternate version of the logo in white because I've got a, a video background. Um, but this is the, the primary color for the Square Internet brand of my website. So I'm going to show you the steps I would take if I was just starting out with this uh, brand, this color to generate a color scheme for my website. And I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, which you can install from the Chrome extension store. So as you can see, when you click on this tool, it gives you the option to pick a color from this page. And then over here, it's displaying the color. So it's giving it a name, it's giving it a hex code, and it's giving it uh, the RGB values. All of these are used to use and render colors on the internet. So I'm going to pick the primary color for my website, which is this midnight blue color, as you can see here. So now I've grabbed the color with the color picker. What I'm going to do is use a tool called Paloton. And you can access it from paloton.com. And so what this does is it generates color palettes, i.e. you know a set of colors you can use based on one color. So we need the, the color code first of all, which we've now got. But I'm now going to see what it can come up with based on the primary color used in my logo. I'll just show you that actually. Um, my logo, the primary version when it's not. Oh, unfortunately, I think I'm using the white version on every page. Oh no, hang on. I know where I put it. So, yeah, so what I was talking about in terms of using the primary color of your logo for the basis of your color scheme makes sense because you want to make sure that your brand is consistent and that everything, the logo generally is the centerpiece of the brand, so everything needs to be consistent with the colors and the style of the logo. So, let's say you've got your logo on your website somewhere, you'd use the color picker, drop it anywhere on the primary color used in your logo. Again, it's giving me this midnight blue color right here. A little tip if you haven't, if you're just getting started or if you haven't got your logo in your header or displaying on your website, all that you'd need to do is go to the WordPress media library and upload your logo file as a PNG or a JPEG and insert it on a page or post. Once the logo is published on a page or post, you can use the color picker tool if you're not sure um, what the hex code or the RGB value is. So first step, use the eyedropper tool to get the RGB or the hex code from your logo or the primary color for your brand. And then what we want to do is drop it into this section of the Paloton tool. Uh, I just want to clear this out first of all. And as you can see, the color palette's changed. And it offers you four different options for generating a color palette. So monochromatic, based on one color. Um, this has been fairly popular at various stages in web design, fashion. So, you know, this design 
this color palette would be using different shades of the one color. So this is the primary color shown here. This is a darker version, a darker version, and then two lighter versions. So what you could do with this color palette is um, you could have, you know, this is your primary color. You could use this to contrast on that color, this to contrast on that color. You could use this as a background in some sections with this displayed on top of it because the two are going to contrast. You can see how you can use these colors across your website to contrast against each other and to complement each other. So monochromatic uh, is one way of setting up a color scheme. Just as a general tip, obviously everybody's got different design preferences and every designer has their own way of doing things. But for a simple small business website, I'd recommend that you don't go overboard and use maybe one or two colors outside of white. So uh, if you look on Square Internet website, we basically just use two colors. Um, to keep it nice and simple, but it seems to work. It looks nice and striking. So we use the midnight blue color, and then we use uh, this dark violetta color, which is a contrasting color as opposed to a monochromatic color. And I'll just show you what I'm talking about here by cycling through a few more of these color palette options. So adjacent colors, these, as you can see, are, are similar, not too different from the color triad it's giving us um, three different color palettes to choose from tetrad is giving us four different color palettes to choose from or you can just use kind of common sense and you know look at the color wheel here um, you know if we've got blue over here what could we use that would contrast you know with that color so dark blue the opposite side of the wheel we have you know uh, dark yellow or bright yellow um, you know these colors here as I showed you the adjacent colors aren't too far different they're just moving kind of around the wheel um, but if you move up here into the the purple and the pinks again they're not too far different but they contrast nicely so that's what I chose to go with on the square internet website was um, I guess you could say complementary color the dark violetta and the the dark midnight blue and then I've styled everything on the website using this color scheme so the midnight blue is my primary color and I've styled most of the website around that I mean, my some of my headings are midnight blue all of my buttons are midnight blue and then I'm using this um, dark violetta color for sections where I want to draw the user's eye and I want to draw someone's attention so on my subscribe my MailChimp sign up box here, I'm using the button because it contrasts against the dark blue background. I also use it um, up here for my scheduler consultation button because again even though I want people to understand that my buttons are in dark blue and when they are looking to take an action, uh, you know, like click through to a ne next page, they're going to want to, they're going to recognize that a button is typically going to be in midnight blue and this is going to help it make them help make it easier for them to use my website because there's a consistent color scheme and that educates their actions this stands out so this will make them think um, you know this is something a bit different this is a call to action it catches the eye and when they click on this they're going to land on my scheduler consultation page but then throughout this, I'm using my primary color again on my um, icons and on my buttons, as I do throughout the rest of my website. So that's how I've built the color schema around my website. And that's how I'd recommend that you build the color schema around your website. So start with your logo. And if you need to upload it to your media library to get an idea of what the hex code is or the RGB values if you're not confident using things like Photoshop where you could access those values then that's a really simple way of doing it just upload it to your media library and you'll be able to get the code uh, the hex code or the RGB code and then you can start playing around with the Palaton tool to generate a color scheme that works for your website and 
to go back to the monochromatic one color color palette again and just show you exactly what it does so it's showing you all these colors but it's also giving you the hex code that you need to style your website so it's all very well thinking a color looks great and would work well on the website but then how do you actually style things on your website with it well you need the hex code which you can grab by clicking on the screen here and it's giving you the hex value the RGB values, a load of other values on the shoe, luminosity. Uh, you don't really need to worry about this stuff, but all that you would need to do is grab the hex code from here and then apply that to the various sections on your website. You can also do that with the, the other colors in the color palette. So hex code for this one, hex code for that one, and for this one. So, nice and straightforward, as I went through at the start of the video, upload your logo to the media library, insert it onto a page, and then use the eyedropper tool to get the primary color used in the logo, and I'd recommend that you start with that, and then go from there using the Paloton tool, or there are other color palette tools out there, but I found this one to be the easiest and the simplest to use. And hopefully that will give you something to start with and something to start working with in terms of developing your own color palette. The various options make it quite easy for you to not go wrong if you're not too confident in the design or you're still new at design. So if you're you know, worried about using a mishmash of colors and whether they will work, this takes out a lot of the guesswork for you by um, you know, providing a monochromatic color scheme, adjacent colors, a triad of colors or tetrad of colors but generally I'd recommend that you just stick with either a monochromatic color scheme or perhaps use adjacent colors or use colors off the triad if you want colors that contrast hopefully you found this video useful and it's a bit of an introduction for you into generating a color palette for your website hopefully it's demystified it slightly and given you some ideas and some tools that you can use to start developing and tweaking a color palette. Don't be disheartened if you can't create something really good straight away. Um, you know, it's probably going to take you a lot of iterations of playing around or perhaps working with your developer to find something that works for the website. Always be looking at the color scheme, tweaking it, seeing how you can improve it, seeing how you can make it more consistent across your website. And hopefully these tools will allow you to do that. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for future videos on WordPress, WooCommerce, Visual Composer, general tips and know-how on WordPress and how to grow, maintain and edit your website. Hopefully you found this useful. If you've got any questions about using the Paloton tool or the eyedropper or the color scheme of your website in general, feel free to leave me a message in the comments or you can email me at hello at squareinternet.co. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.